thanks so much for coming. Um, so I'm so glad you've taken some time on your lunch today to come and hear from an awesome partner of MCC's, Emily Coyle. She is the director of national programs at the Refugee Hub, which is an organization that is dedicating to supporting justice and human rights for refugees. So she's here to provide an update on what's going on in the refugee sponsorship world right now, um, and to tell us about a fund that is currently available for sponsors considering doing this again or doing this for the first time. Um, and so without further ado, Emily. Thank you, <laughs> Haley. Um, so I thought that I had a microphone, but I'm, I'm gonna project. So please let me know if you cannot hear me in the back. You can? I have a very loud voice. I recently discovered that my mother has a hearing, um, she's losing her hearing, but I didn't know because I'm so loud that she can hear me, but she can't hear my sisters. Anyway, um, I just would like to take a quick moment to understand who's in the room um, and a little bit about whether or not you're familiar with refugee work and refugee sponsorship. So just if you could tell me who you are um, and sort of your level of comfort with refugees and refugee sponsorship so that I know who I'm speaking with. Um, and who's in the room? Do you want to start? Okay. Hi, I'm Lori, and uh, I am a refugee sponsor right now. I okay. Share, uh, family came in February. Ooh, first time sponsor? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you. Lori. Yeah. I'm Wendy, director of programs here at MCC Ontario. We operate the refugee program. Okay. Awesome. Okay, great. Perfect. Hello. We're doing introductions. <laughs> You've just walked in. Would you like to That's jump in? Like yeah, all right, okay. <laughs> Over to you then. Oh, great. Okay, well, we'll talk then. <laughs> Maybe, if you're interested. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, nice to meet you, Ruby. Okay, great. From Abundance Canada. Abundance Canada. And so in our day to day work, certainly we help donors as far as facilitating gifts to uh, different refugee sponsorships. Uh, and uh, our church in Sora Atlantic is, uh, has been very active actually in the last decades as far as sponsoring refugees. And there is another one imminently coming, we think, in the next few months. Wow. So, oh, so far. It's all sponsorship experts in the room, okay? <laughs> I don't have to do my presentation. <laughs> okay. 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 Wonderful. Nice to meet you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, great. I'm Heather. I work at MCC no. as well. Uh, yeah, my, similar. My church has been involved. In, yeah. Great. Okay. Wonderful. Can I ask you at the back? I'm Laura. I'm a friend of Wow. Okay, great. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yes, it's you, I think. Nope, oh. beside you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Esther Neufeld, um, work at Manor Homes, and what Ruby said, I go to the same church. So, uh, but I think I think I was at a church in eighty when the, um, the Indo Chinese, people, yeah, or Indo, yeah, yeah, part of that too. So. Wow, so a long time. Yeah. Okay, now to you. All right, uh, Rod Friesen, I'm a restorative justice program coordinator. Okay. 
And have you been involved with sponsorship or refugee issues? Or? Yes, yes. Um, uh, mainly refugee claimants. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Inland. Providing settlement support. Wonderful. Oh, that's great. Okay. Uh, my name is Dan. I no longer work for MCC. Because <laughs> everyone else here still does. So I work for Mental Homes. Um, and yeah, I remember when our small rural church also was involved in the original refugee settlement program back in the 70s. Um, and now we, through Mental Homes, provide housing or are often contacted by churches who are looking for housing for refugee families. Oh, yeah. yeah. Here in KW? In KW, our region. Oh, excellent. And do you have some? Not right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we do Curiosity. have refugee families living in our housing currently. Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Who's next? This way, uh, this way? Starting yes. Here. Okay, uh, Brent Burks with Knox Presbyterian Church. In uh -huh. um, and we have sponsored one family currently struggling with an application for an Eritrean uh, mm. refugee in Sudan, which is a hard, hard thing, it seems. To communicate. Communicate, mm -hmm. and if we get a glitch, trying to so sort out the glitch is to be really difficult. But we're also I'm, I'm interested in what, what's new because our refugee family that is here uh, has family. And so when we sort out the European one, we would like to help as well. Sure. I may not be giving you great news, but we can talk. Yeah. Hmm. I'm John Head, and I work with MCC, and that our involvement with refugee resettlement is the extent of my knowledge. Okay. So. Okay, great. Ken. Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm Ken. I work in communications here at MCC. <coughs> I have a mouthful. <laughs> Sorry, um, Ken. No. <laughs> Although you knew it was coming. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I thought I'd skip it. Um, my church is not, I've not been personally involved in a sponsorship, but okay. I know quite a bit about it through writing stories, collaborating with Kaylee and other refugee right. program people. And so I'm very familiar, but not yet. Battle tested. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm Miss Brooklyn, and my church has been involved in this culture a few years ago. Okay. And not at the moment? No, yeah. We like, we're so involved with them. Of course. Uh, okay, good to know. Okay, I'm uh, Cheryl, I work for communications along with Ken here at MTC, and I had a uh, few years back, I also worked in the refugee program. Okay, great. My name is Ellen. I work at Mennonite Church Peace in Canada. I volunteered with Kaylee a few years back with Refugee Program. Okay. And my church also is sponsored for that. Wonderful. Great. Hi, I'm Wendy. Uh, I had my first encounter with refugees in 1980. I'm now refugees in Ontario, but have spent 10 years in Southeast Asia working in countries that were sending refugees at one point. So and Wendy and I used to work together at the Edmonton Mennonite Center for Newcomers 11, 12 years ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Valerie, I work here at CC, which is also sponsored. Wow, okay, cool. So now to you. Are you ready? Great, thank you. And I'm Kaylee, and I work at CCD Communications. My name is Charles Oh, okay. Oh, cool. And everyone knows Kaylee? Yes? Okay, good. So I'm at the Refugee Hub, and um, can I play a video? Like, is there audio? Okay. So first, I'd like to start off with a video um, that many of you, considering what you've just told me, I think will connect with. So where I am is at the Refugee Hub, which is based at the University of Ottawa, and it was started in 2012 um, by Professor Jennifer Bond, and she and some other professors you may be familiar with, Peter Schauler, who's also a big name in the refugee uh, world, decided that based on the changes that the Harper government was bringing in to the inland claim, so refugee claimants, um, they were going to look at uh, developing a program that would help frontline settle settlement workers understand 
the inland claim process so that they could help with evidence collection. So we called that program the University of Ottawa Refugee Assistance Program. And then since then, uh, we've been involved in other legal related um, refugee programming. And one of them might be interesting to you uh, is the SSP, which is the Sponsorship Support Program. We've trained over 1,400 lawyers and law students across Canada to help people with private sponsorship applications. And so the lawyers are the ones who help with all of the applications, um, including the refugee side, so helping to gather the narrative, et cetera. Um, and we have around 15 to 20 employees right now. One of our biggest programs is the Global Refugee Sponsorship Initiative, which is GRSI. And that is the program where we take Canada's model of sponsorship and we are exporting it around the world to try to convince other countries to take on our model of sponsorship, not perhaps in exactly the same way, but to tailor it to their own country. And we've had a lot of success in places like the UK, Ireland, uh, Argentina is looking at developing uh, their own, even though they have a similar one right now. Uh, New Zealand, uh, Spain, Portugal, Germany, many countries. So it's very exciting. So I'm here today to talk to you about the Blended Visa Office Referred Program, BVOR, which is an unfortunate name. It's a really long <laughs> sort of, you have to say it in your mouth a few times, but it's, it's different from government assisted refugees. As you know, government assisted refugees are referred by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees for resettlement in countries around the world. Well, so are the folks who are coming through the BVOR program. And in fact, BVOR and GAR, those are the acronyms, government assisted and BVOR, all come from the same pool of referred people, referred through the UNHCR for resettlement. Now, currently, I'm sure you aware, are aware that there are around 28 million people, those are the latest numbers of refugees who are um, all over the world, primarily in places like Lebanon, Turkey, um, Pakistan. And, in, and these people have three durable solutions that are available to them, according to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. So one of them is local integration, stay in the country where they are. The other one is voluntary repatriation to their country of origin if it is safe enough for them to go there. And the third, which is available to the smallest number of people, is resettlement to a third country. And those are the people that come to the GAR or the BVOR program. The PSR program is very different. The PSR program is our most robust and well-subscribed program in Canada. And that is the program where people here can name refugees overseas. And that's the program that we work on, which is the SSP program, where we prepare those large applications. We had around 20,000, I'm rounding up, PSRs come in last year, and around 10,000 combined GARs and BVORs. So we have way more people coming to Canada under the named program than we do under the UNHCR referred program. And this year, it didn't matter. The UNHCR still claimed all of them as resettled refugees in their numbers and said that Canada was the largest resettlement country in the world uh, based on the numbers of around 30,000 people who came to Canada last year. Now, prior to the Trump administration, the United States obviously was the biggest country. They would resettle around 100,000 refugees per year. Now that has dwindled to 20,000. So there's a lot of uh, space we have to make up. So why, what is the BVOR program and why is it different from other sponsorship? Well, I've already talked to you about the, the UNHCR part. But the UNHCR matches BVOR refugees with people who are private sponsors like yourselves. And the Government of Canada provides up to six months of income support, and the remaining six months is for the private sponsors to come up with, and the startup costs are also the responsibility of the private sponsors. And then, of course, you're all familiar, as I've heard, with the rest of the responsibilities that are, available, that are um, your responsibility for the year. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I became involved with sponsorship, and it started with a bag of tea. Um, and so this bag of tea, Earl Grey, is my favorite cup of tea from Nova Scotia. It's um, a fair trade uh, company called Just Us that makes it. And I contacted them because I had heard that there were some refugees in Al Hol, which some of you may be familiar with. It was refugee camp set up in Syria at the time for Iraqi refugees in 2000, 
in the mid-2000s. And we had heard that they were closing those camps down in Syria and that they needed to resettle a number of Iraqi refugees and they were looking for sponsors in Canada. So I approached just us and I said, I'd like to invite my neighbors to my house to find out if anybody would like to do private refugee sponsorship with me. And they donated five uh, boxes of tea for my tea party. So my kids and I uh, prepared little um, papers and we, we stapled a bag of tea and we said, come to my house on this day and please share a cup of tea. I'd like to talk to you about the possibility of sponsoring refugees. Um, and about 10 people showed up and we ended up sponsoring um, my good friend Besma, who was there on her uh, citizenship ceremony day. And so Besma came uh, with her husband and her two children. And since that time, they've had two other children in Canada. And that was in 2009. And that was really what sparked my interest in sponsorship. And since then, I have not stopped. I've continued to sponsor through two other sponsoring groups, but I primarily sponsor now only LGBTQ plus um, refugees who are very, very vulnerable and are vulnerable usually in their country of asylum as well. So that is how I became involved. So I will talk to you a little bit about the BVOR fund. And I have these available, and if you wouldn't mind passing them around. Oh no, just, just pass them as you, yeah, as we chat. So uh, last year, the BVOR program, um, to back up a little bit, the BVOR program started in 2013 as a pilot project. The government of Canada at the time was trying to save money and did not want to have to pay for all of the government-assisted refugees, so came up with the idea of taking a number of those government-assisted refugees and turning them into privately sponsored refugees with a little bit of help from the government. So, uh, the numbers were very low in 2013, 2014. It was a target of around 300 people arriving through BVOR, and it was very undersubscribed. We had maybe 150 come through BVOR. Nobody really knew about the program. Uh, nobody talked about it until guess when? 2015, when everyone discovered that there were Syrian refugees in the world, and Canada woke up and decided to become uh, the world's preeminent sponsors, which was awesome. And the BVOR program was oversubscribed in 2016 with over 4,000 people coming through the BVOR program, which was amazing because we suddenly had this mechanism um, by which, well, we didn't suddenly, we've always had visa office referred, but by which people could bring strangers to Canada that they didn't know. They wanted to do something about refugee sponsorship. So the new government decided they were going to up the levels of the BVOR program. And in 2017, um, the levels were at 1250. In 2018, it was 1500 allocated spots. And this year, it's 1650. And that is people, not cases. So total people coming. So uh, in early May of 2018, those of us who are really interested in this BVOR program saw that it was very undersubscribed. And we were very worried because if you have a country that has allocated spots for resettlement and those are going to go unused in a world where we've just discussed with dwindling resettlement spots available, every single spot is very precious. And so we wanted to ensure that we had, oh my God, five minutes. All right, I'm going to go quickly. We wanted to ensure that we had enough sponsors that year. So um, with the generosity of some of our partners on our global refugee sponsorship initiative, we came up with this idea of creating a fund that private sponsors could apply to to help them with the private sponsor, sponsor side of the BVOR program. And we, we decided to open it up for seven weeks between August 7th and September 17th. And we said to the donors, do not have high expectations. We don't know what's going to happen. We have all these spots available, but we don't know if anyone's going to come forward. Lo and behold, in seven weeks, over 150 groups in 49 communities across, across the country signed up for this. Almost 50% of them were first time sponsors, which is really remarkable to me. And the demographics of those sponsors are also very interesting because we know that BVOR sponsors uh, generally come from a certain demographic, from a faith-based background often, are white. Um, and 
when we looked at the people who took up the Bivor Fund in 2018, we saw there were Sudanese sponsoring Sudanese people that they didn't know, but they felt that they should because they were from their community and the money was available. We saw Eritreans sponsoring Eritreans. We saw millennials who thought, you know, I don't have the money to do this, but suddenly the money's available and I really want to get involved. So it was a really interesting shift in uh, how we saw sponsorship. And we were able to sponsor almost 700 people, which was pretty exciting to us. So you can see that most of the sponsors came from, Can from Ontario, but that doesn't mean we can't do it differently this year. And this is just what I was talking about, who had sponsored in the past. This is a really nice quote from uh, one of the sponsors from last year who was a new sponsor. And I think you can all probably, there's two quotes here, but I think you can probably all relate to the fact that sponsorship is one of the most piercingly human experiences that people can um, do. And I certainly uh, feel that way as well. It is an intimate and it is messy sometimes. But because of that messiness and that intimacy, it makes it so important and so valuable. So this year, we have a fund again. And you can see in front of you how to apply for the fund if you're interested. Again, we're undersubscribed with the BVOR program. There are 1,650 spots, as I mentioned. And at the moment, we're sitting at around 600. So we still have 1,000 spots available. Um, and we're looking to uh, bring in as many new sponsors from across the country in the next seven weeks. We've had this um, fund open since May the 2nd. Uh, it was seeded by the Shapiro Foundation again and a new uh, donor named Barry Landry. Both of them are from the, philanthropi uh, th the philanthropist um, sector in Boston, as a matter of fact. But Ed Shapiro, who runs the Shapiro Foundation, is Jewish. And uh, we find that we have a lot in common with um, folks who have a Jewish background because they also, you know, have refugees in their past. And he feels very strongly about this work. Um, so what is available this year is you can apply for all of the sponsor side costs, but not the startup costs. That's different. And if you are attached to a sponsorship agreement holder like MCC, MCC can also apply for some money up to $50,000, depending on how many cases they take on. And we're hopeful that that money will help with the administrative side of supporting all of the many sponsorships that are happening. We have tons of resources available for those of you who might be interested. And this is how you apply. You have it in front of you. It's really, really easy. Um, we're not trying to put up any barriers. <laughs> we're actually trying to attract people. So if you're interested and your church has done it in the past and is now interested in maybe doing it again, this is the time. We have a 1,000 people who are waiting to come to Canada under this program. And that is it. Did I do it? Yeah. Yes. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And just before we open it up to questions, I also wanted to mention that if you're looking for a tool or a resource that could help you share with your community, your church, your, com your neighbors about how to get engaged in this. Um, MCC has a Choose Welcome campaign that we've started and we have a bunch of postcards that you can take with you. There's a bunch on the table there. They basically share the stories of the refugee need and then of sponsors who have done this sharing why they have chosen welcome. Um, the, the tagline is, while walls are being built, choose welcome. So at a time where we are building not only physical walls, but also emotional walls, uh, we're seeking to, to break down those walls one story at a time. So thank you. For that. It's an awesome campaign. I think it's very helpful. Yeah, to those of you who need to, you know, spread the word. <laughs> yes. Oh, I wanted to tell you, my first sponsorship was with the Knox Presbyterian Church in Halifax. They were our saw. There's a few of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, our first sponsorship was uh, Bivor. Yeah. Uh, sponsorship. And that family has family in Lebanon. Yes. Who have their refugee registrations at UNHCR. What's their process at that end? Do they go to the Canadian consulate or something to apply to... To be on the Bivor list? They can't. It's just a UNHCR, sure. UNHCR decision of this? Yeah. 
So the question, because I have a mic on for the video, I'm going to repeat it. The question is, um, for someone who's here, who came as a beaver, who has family remaining overseas, can they or how can they apply to get on that BVOR list? Um, we have no, they have no and we have no control over that. The UNHCR are the ones who refer to the Canadian missions overseas and the Canadian <coughs> missions, you know, make the lists of the GARs and BVORs. So, yeah, it's unfortunate, but we can't. We see a lot of echo effect happening. We call the echo effect BVORs who've arrived and then want <coughs> to sponsor their family members. Um, and the family that we sponsored ended up having 50 of their family members living in Halifax in the end. Um, and so they just will have to come through the regular PSR stream. And if you're interested in getting support with that application, <coughs> please contact me because we have the other program that I talked about that has lawyers who could help you with the applications. It is a lengthy, the difference is BVOR um, sponsored folks come really quickly. Um, in fact, I said to the donors, don't worry, we're not going to have any arrivals until August. And then, boom, people are arriving in July already. So a month to six months is at the outset. There are some you know, cases where it takes a little bit longer, but they're, they arrive really quickly. They're usually what you, IRCC calls travel ready. So, yeah. So as an individual, definitely, when I fly, they have to go through MCC or like uh, organization, like so. Organization. Yeah, so the, yeah, so the question is, as a person who wants to apply for the BVOR program and access the fund, you first have to have a sponsorship agreement holder that you're connected with. If you don't, obviously you do here in this room, but if you don't, we will automatically connect you with the SAW. And then through the SAW, you would let us know through the email, which is your expression of interest that you're interested. We'd send you the application, you fill it out. <clears throat> Since you have a SAW who trusts you, because the SAW is really the supporting uh, organization, then we would um, probably just accept your application. Yeah. The other part of the question, thank you. For yes. That. Uh, uh, what if I am uh, sponsoring through a uh, corporation? Is that also possible? Like I own a corporation. Yes. Or it has to be a, a person individually. Yeah, oh, oh. so it depends so on what. You and then to them. Yeah, it depends oh. on what the saw is comfortable with, right? In terms of how you form your group. But I will say this: one of the things we're working on for 2019 is to encourage people to sponsor in their workplaces. We spend eight to ten hours a day with people that we work with, and so if you are well, most of you work here, but if you are not working here, or you have an, another workplace and you want to form a group there, um, that's you know, another location. It doesn't have to just be um, at your church or in your neighborhood. You can also consider your workmates as possible potential uh, sponsors. Yeah. What would be the ideal group size? So that also depends on the sponsorship agreement holder. Oh, the question is, what is the ideal uh, group size? And that depends on the sponsorship agreement holder and the size of the family. So if you have an eight to 10 person family, you might want to have a much larger group to support them. If you have a single individual, you'll have a smaller group, but I would say minimum saws are looking for at least five people. Yes, okay. Any other questions? Um, I have a question for all of you. <laughs> and a challenge, in fact. I wonder, if anyone after this presentation is thinking, you know what, I'd really like to access these funds and I'd like to talk to my community about going through the BVOR program this year. Anybody in this room? Yes? Yes? Great. So I'd like to challenge three. I'd like to say maybe if we could get five to ten sponsorships out of today, I would be extremely excited. Um, I was on the phone with a small town just as I was walking into this room, which made me a little bit late. This small town is looking to take on five sponsorships. Um, we have World University Services Canada who's looking to take on at least 10 to 20 sponsorships across Canada. So I think if we can do that, we'll be able to both uh, fill the un unfulfilled spots this year, but also look at sustainability of this really great program. So. Okay, great, thanks everybody.
wonderful work that you do every day in your churches and in your work. I feel really excited to be in the room with like-minded people. <laughs>